Something I've wondered ever since I bought the G35 was how healthy the engine is. I ended up buying the car with 100,000 miles and I've put a bit of miles already. I think I put about 27,000 on it and I've always wondered how healthy the engine is. So in today's video, we're going to be finding that out. So the test we're going to be doing is called a compression test. If you guys are not familiar with that, we're basically going to be cranking the engine without any fuel and making sure that we have the proper PSI uh, compression in each cylinder that we're supposed to. Depending on the outcome of the test you'll be able to know the health of your engine whether it's messed up valves whether it's messed up piston rings or a bad head gasket it does give you somewhat an indication of how healthy your engine is so i'll be showing you guys how to do it on your personal vehicle so in case you want to do this test on your car you can go ahead and do it we are accompanied by the man himself the guy with the broken bmw hello it's broken down next door to this <laughs> So the first thing you're going to need is some sort of compression test kit. I went ahead and bought one from Harbor Freight, but you can also go to your auto parts and end up renting one and then giving it back. That way you don't have to spend any money on these compression test kits. This is just a standard one. I went ahead and just connected a line just to show for demonstration, but this is really simple to use. It does give you a gauge and then the gauge will tell you how much PSI you are running on your car. As far as the engine bay, we are going to be accessing the coils on the side, so we might need to take off the intake and also try to access the coils over here and remove the spark plugs as well another thing we are going to need to access is going to be this cover we'll need to take it off so we can go ahead and remove the fuse for the fuel but other than that there isn't much to it it's a relatively simple process and having somebody else like leo helping me over there will help make this a lot easier all right so first thing we need to do is turn on the car let it warm up it does say let it warm up properly so we can get an accurate measurement after that we'll turn off the car then we'll start disconnecting the ignition coils the spark plugs the fuse and everything else that we need to do <laughs> Alright guys, so the things you're going to need to take off is going to be this cover right here. You're also going to need to take off the cowl that goes on the windshield. After that, you're going to take off this cover which is located down there. So you are going to have to take this off and it does tell you where the fuse is for the fuel pump. So once you do all that, you will have the fuses exposed and the one you're going to look for is going to be the first 15 amp fuses in the top right. That's going to be your fuel pump fuse. So you're going to want to disconnect that one and then you'll be good to go. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the fuse and then go inside of the car and turn it on if it turns on it'll turn off in a couple seconds if it doesn't turn on just go ahead and crank it after that you've done everything you can feel related to make sure you're safe and all good to go for the compression test <laughs> You just saw right now the car didn't turn over so we're all good to go on that portion. Nissan tells you to take all the spark plugs out. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to go one by one also just to keep myself more organized. It'll be easier. So I'm going to start on this side and then we'll go around the whole car and then do the compression test on each cylinder. By the way guys, I'm not sure if you guys know what coil that is but there is a video coming out in the future where I am testing out some new coils. If you know, you know but if you don't, I'll make a video on it in the future so just stay tuned I am testing it out to make sure it's a quality video this is a way cheaper alternative to some of the things that there is in the market so very excited for that video to come out so stay tuned for that Now that we took out the ignition coil and the spark plug, we can go ahead and connect the gauge. And the gauge will just connect the same way the spark plug does, so I'll just go ahead and twist it. And then after that, I'm going to give it a couple cranks with the engine. One thing to note, and it's very important, it is what Nissan states, is to do wide open throttle while you're cranking the engine. It's just what Nissan states, and I'm sure a lot of people haven't done that. So whether or not that messes up with the compression test, I'm not entirely sure. But that's something you should definitely do if you are trying to compression test your vehicle, since that's what Nissan recommends recommends to do. So I'm getting Leo to come out here and help me out with the car. He's going to be cranking while pushing down the gas pedal all the way down. All right, we're ready. We're connected. So we have the gauge ready to go. Leo's going to be cranking the car. All right, starting um, gear, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I was talking about, you need to do the wide open throttle as you're cranking it. Just have your foot all the way down on the accelerator all right. and then we'll be good to go. Wiggle. Jeez, 210? 210 again, yeah, or a little over 210. I connected cylinder number two, so now we're gonna test cylinder number four. So if you guys don't know the firing order, it goes one, two, 
three, four, five, six. So like I said, I tested number two, now we're gonna test number four, and then we'll go ahead and test number six at the end. All right, stop. Damn. You know how to fuck with Joe, Leo? When he's taking out that spark plug, like when he's got like two or three threads left, crank over the motor and his spark plug will oh, rip out. Oh, that shit'll fucking kill me. Yep. I started getting a little suspicious about the numbers that I was getting because they seemed a little too good to be true to be honest I was expecting it to be like around 185 because that's like the standard so seeing anything over 200 I was a little suspicious about it So I mentioned earlier that I wasn't going to remove the spark plugs and I wasn't gonna remove all the ignition coils And I was gonna do it one at a time so that way I can keep myself organized Then I started getting suspicious because one of you guys ended up commenting saying that that seems a little high but I already had that in my mind and I'm like that seems a little weird to me as well So I'm gonna do it without the spark spark plugs inside of each of the cylinders. So I removed the spark plugs and the ignition coils from all of the cylinders and they actually ended up reading higher on cylinder number two. So this is cylinder number two and that is reading basically at 220. So that just lets me know that the numbers were true and that they weren't, you know, because of me having the spark plugs in, even though I already knew that that wasn't gonna be an issue. But if you guys know me, then you guys know that I'm OCD. So that's why I ended up doing that because I wanted to get the true numbers. So now I'm gonna retest cylinder number Number four and cylinder number six and then we'll go on the other bank and we'll do one three and five for the people that are new to the channel I am planning on boosting the G35 so having these numbers is letting me know that the engine is in really good condition you know with these VQs on the G35s and the 350Zs you kind of expect the piston rings to really be worn out and this isn't the case thankfully so I am gonna be able to run the turbo no problem without feeling a little weird about it if I already have a bad engine to begin with it kind of sucks on doing everything to it but thankfully that's not the case so far so so we're gonna go ahead and do all the other cylinders and we'll be able to see what the final outcome is. All right, and the final outcome is going to be 215 for cylinder number four. So we are good to go on cylinder number four as well. Like I said, I was just double checking. I had my suspicions, but you know, thankfully they didn't change and they actually got a little bit better. All right guys, so this one is for cylinder number six and it's a little bit over 210, but I'd just say it's like 210. So that's for cylinder number six. So we are all good to go on this side of the bank. So now for the real deal on this bank, we're gonna go ahead and test it out and make sure that we have good compression on this side as well all right guys so that is cylinder number one on the other bank so let's go ahead and check it out so that one's actually at 225 I'm not really sure if I mentioned this or not but this was a one owner car so when I got it I obviously became the second owner so this is really nice because it was maintained really well maintenance records everything the only thing that was pretty beat up was the transmission so I'm glad that the engines all good and I obviously have a transmission ready to go and swap it in same thing cylinder number three is going to be two 20 actually so so like I said everything is really close to each other which is really good indication as well I think the most they can be different is like 15 psi of difference in, from each cylinder so the fact that all of them are really close together is a really good sign so I don't have to worry about that all right guys so this is the last cylinder that we're gonna be testing and it is cylinder number five so let's go ahead and test this out so I just keep it until it stops moving the needle so right there and then we're done all right last one moment of truth let's see so this one's a little bit over 210 so i'm just gonna claim it as 210 i was honestly expecting like 185 across the board which wouldn't have been bad it's just a standard you know keep in mind this does have 127,000 miles this isn't the rev up so i'm assuming you know with the rev ups there was a lot more oil consumption problems and also the piston rings were definitely a bigger thing um, i'm really happy with the results it definitely did shock me the fact that it was so high so if you have a 350z or a g35 there you guys have it you know how to to do it you know exactly where the fuse is for the fuel pump you know exactly what you need to be doing throughout this whole video I also put screenshots of what Nissan tells you what to do so that way you can go ahead and do it yourself and just pause the video and read it but this gives you a really good indication of the health of your engine or maybe you're having a couple issues with it and you want to understand where the problem is if it's a head gasket if it's the piston rings too much blow by I think this is a very good test for people who do have the VQs and want to know where the health is of their engine
so there we have it guys we did a compression test on the g35 and we found out the health of the engine i'm really happy with the fact that there is good compression on the engine it definitely gives me a little peace of mind with this car even though i've done a lot of maintenance to the g35 there's still a lot of little things that i should be doing one of them being the water pump and the timing chain tensioner those are just notorious to be one of the things that you know you definitely want to take care of before they fail like two videos ago i ended up installing test pipes on the g35 and a little update on them I went ahead and did an exhaust leak test to see if there was any exhaust leaks on the g35 and i found no exhaust leaks on the test pipes from the part that mates onto the white pipe and also from the headers so the gaskets are working properly and that also includes the gaskets that i used to connect to the white pipe being the ones that came with the kit one thing to note though is the white pipe does sit a lot lower i'd say about a four finger difference now on from the ground to the white pipe so that's something i didn't want to hide from you guys i definitely wanted you guys to know that because it is a very very important thing if your car's already low that's going to make it even lower but honestly that's the only con that i can find with those test pipes but they're definitely worth it so that's going to be all for this video i hope you guys did enjoy this and i hope you guys actually learned something from this video whether it's as small as learning where the fuel pump fuse is on the g35s or 350zs or knowing how to do your compression test on your car now but with that being said a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out